A backlog at the port of Cape Town is forcing exporters to truck good hundreds of thousands of kilometers to reach shipping routes. The port has been operated at a reduced capacity due to the lockdown. Bad weather and staff shortages due to the coronavirus are also playing a part. To discuss, to discuss this more, we're joined by the Provincial Finance MEC, David Mania. Very good morning to you, David. Uh, pretty devastating picture there. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because of uh, port inefficiencies, there are, as you say, significant uh, delays with sometimes uh, more than 10 ships at Anchorage outside uh, the, the port. And because of that, shipping lines are now starting to look at uh, skipping Cape Town. Some shipping lines are, caught, are charging surcharges. And as you mentioned in your intro, some of the exporters, particularly in the fruit industry, are looking at alternative ports and are in fact um, trucking uh, containers to, for example, uh, Port Elizabeth Harbour. How quickly, if you got everything that you needed, would you be able to clear this issue up? So I think in the short term, uh, the, we are moving in the, in the right direction. Uh, particularly in the container environment. I think Transnet have done three things which I think are start, is starting to alleviate the pressure. First, uh, I mean, new leadership has been appointed uh, in the form of Valila Dube, who is now the new CEO of uh, Transnet Port Terminals, and he has considerable experience in this environment and in the port of Cape Town, as it, as it happens. More importantly, what Transnet have done within the last two weeks is they have uh, brought down 20 additional uh, employees uh, from the, the port of Durban, who uh, are skilled uh, workers, particularly crane operators. So they have a strategy of augmentation uh, with uh, more uh, skilled workers, meaning that there are uh, more gangs, and we are now able to, I think, operate at least two of the three berths at the, the container terminal. And then finally, I think Transnet uh, have started to move in the right direction and start to uh, communicate much more strongly and regularly uh, with all the stakeholders who are uh, affected in the port. So I think we, these measures are going to start, start to eliminate uh, the backlog. But at the end of the day, there are some deep underlying structural uh, problems that will have to be dealt with at the port after a sort of a decade of underinvestment uh, in infrastructure. There are sort of deep systemic issues, uh, long-term issues uh, that we are going to have to deal with uh, in the in the future in order to build efficiencies in like the, what infrastructure. Uh, so I think uh, over the last decade, there's been a significant underinvestment in uh, infrastructure. So there are, we will need uh, additional and uh, new cranes, for, for uh, example, uh, in the harbour in order to build long-term efficiencies uh, in the port of Cape Town. What is this costing us daily? So the, it, it's hard to put a figure to it. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, it is compromising the competitiveness of the, the provincial economy. And you can just imagine exporters, particularly exporters in the, in the fruit industry, are incur incurring massive additional costs as they, for example, face surcharges on containers, sometimes depending on the size of the container, up to $1,000 per container. As they ship containers at the cost of about 16,000 Rand per container mm -hmm. uh, to alternative ports. Uh, and then, of course, they, they, because of all this, uh, they deal in perishable products. So there's always a concern that the delays could affect the quality of their products, which ultimately uh, leads to a concern about uh, whether they will le lose market share and ultimately that translates, as I say, into compromising the competitiveness of uh, our economy uh, and costs us growth and jobs in the Western Cape. I can imagine. David, thank you.